Hey everybody, welcome back to the shed. I'm Troy Shaw, and with me, of course, it's Holly. Is Holly a little miniature schnauzer with us? But it's Dave. What's going on, Dave? Oh, not much, Troy. Uh, we're taking the shed on the road to record with our special guest. Why don't you make the introductions? Well, today we have the great honor of meeting one of the best guitarists in Texas, Kenny Frazier. How's it going? Hi. How's it going, Kenny? Good. Very good. Good. Thanks for inviting us uh, into your home today to uh, do this interview. You bet. You yeah, bet. thanks for having us in the shed. I've been wanting to do this since, really, since we first started this, believe it or not. Well, Kenny, you have quite the reputation around these parts as a jazz swing six stringer. Uh, let's start at the beginning, though. Are you, are you originally from Waco? or Originally from Waco, born and raised. Uh, met up with Johnny Gimble at 15 years old. Wow. And he's the one that's responsible for probably 90% of what I know today. He was, uh, he was my guru, mm -hmm. my teacher. Were you, were you already playing guitar when you met Johnny? Oh, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Johnny in a, in a weird way. I was working with a band here called Charlie Adams and the Western All-Stars. <laughs> and uh, they started the Home Folks show here in Waco. Where'd you play? Uh, with Charlie? Yeah. Oh, we were regional. We played Mississippi, Texas, Oklahoma, oh, really? New Mexico. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, they were scared, uh, They were scheduled to start the Home Folks show with Johnny Gimble. And uh, they couldn't make it. So we went in and did the show for them on the first day. And then the next day we weren't sure they were gonna make it, so we went down there, and sure enough they did make it, and that's where I met Johnny Kimball at that show. So what, um, who got your ears perk, you know, as a youngster and led you to the, the guitar? Well, I started out as a country guitar player. Uh, I played country music for all oh, probably 10 years, starting at the age of 15, believe it or not. <clears throat> and then somebody turned me on to Barney Kessel. Sure. And I heard one Barney Kessel album and I was hooked. So the jazz kind of creeped in right then. The jazz came in right there. I started I started thinking that way and, and uh, approaching the instrument that way. And uh, I, find, I I got a chance to, to see him and meet him in Dallas when he was working with uh, Charlie Bird and uh, uh, another guitar player from Texas. I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, uh, I got to see him and meet him briefly there. And then I met up with him again in Tishomingo, Oklahoma where they used to have a gigantic jam session. And they would have, uh, uh, this guy would just donate his house and would move all the furniture out. And uh, we took up about two rooms of that, uh, that house. And uh, I was sitting there playing, I was sitting on a stool. How, how old were you at this time? Oh, uh, 27, tw no, I guess I was older than that. Gosh, because I, I started teaching at MCC at 40, 42, I think. So anyway, I had one of my students with me, and uh, we went up there to take advantage of the jam session, and in walks Barney Kessel, and I was sitting on a stool, and he said, do you mind if I play? And I said, no, so I got up off the stool <laughs> you know, and let him sit down. And we played for about an hour and a half or so. And I asked Barney, I said, can I come to Oklahoma City and take some lessons like maybe once a month? He said, no. He said, while I'm teaching you for 30 minutes or an hour, I could be preparing material for other people to, to get into. He said, I'd rather just keep it like it is. And I said, okay. But he sat there on the couch with us and talked to us for about an hour and a half and wow. told us how he approached his arrangements for guitar. And uh, it was just marvelous. It was it was an education in itself. 
Did he? Did you guys ever record any of that stuff, or was it just informal and just? No, out? it was totally informal. Yeah, I don't think he would have let us record it right. anyway. Because, you know, he's he's kind of play it close to the vest, or was. Oh, really? uh, play it close to the vest. Don't don't steal any of my licks. Don't <laughs> steal any of my ideas. Don't steal any of this or that. So I think he would have probably really balked at having anything recorded. So he wanted you to play it and then forget it. That's right, yeah. Play it, forget it, yeah. and that's it. Enjoy it at yeah. the time and be done with it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So let's go back to Johnny. Uh, you, you met Johnny at age 15. Talk about that, uh, the first meeting a little more. Okay, we were, we were uh, at the studio and Johnny came in and uh, I was... Was, was he living in Waco then? Or, or? No, he was living in Dallas. Yeah, okay. Uh, he had not yet moved to Waco. Right. And uh, anyway, he, uh, we shook hands and, and got to talking a little bit. And uh, he had uh, Slim Harbert and Mally Ann Harbert with him and uh, Cotton, I think it was Cotton, Cotton Ward uh, was the steel guitar, uh, was the steel guitar player and uh, they, uh, it was just a, a, a great group, a very good group, but uh, Johnny started playing dances around this area. This is before the Playboys then. No, this is after the Playboys. Oh, the Playboys. Yeah, this is after the Playboys. He did not come to Waco till after he okay. got through with the Playboys. Now, are you talking about Playboys 2, 1, or the original Playboys? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I met Johnny there at the station, and we shook hands, and, and uh, he asked a little bit about me and all that, and uh, uh, he started playing dance jobs around here. And he said, "Well, I'm, uh, you know, I might hire you for some dance jobs." Of course, he played mandolin, which sounded just like a guitar, and uh, so he much preferred steel guitar as his second instrument. And uh, Maurice Anderson was playing that mostly. He was doing most of the, uh, the steel guitar playing on the job. And uh, anyway, they uh, he took a job at Cameron, over at the National Hall at Cameron. And he called me up and he said, I need a favor. And I said, well, what can I do for you? He said, you, you can come with me and play bass. And I said, bass? I've never played bass in my life. And he said, well, just stand there and hold it. I just need somebody, <laughs> you know, need to, need to make my contract. So anyway, <laughs> we got there and he put this upright bass in my hand. And I think maybe the closest I had ever been to one was sit on one one time. <laughs> but anyway, so I played bass during that job and just tore my fingers up. Just tore them totally up. But anyway... Well, that's, you're not supposed to bend the strings on Oh, no, I tried. I tried not to. <laughs> yeah, I tried to play some of these blues licks. Yeah, right. down, 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 down. <laughs> but it didn't work real well. But uh, anyway, so... We kind of became connected at that point, and uh, he did hire me for some for some dance jobs. And there was a uh, a guy named Bill Mounts, and he was kind of the uh, coordinator of the Waco musical scene. And he and Johnny were good friends; they had been friends for a long time. <clears throat> and uh, so Bill Mounts uh, and Johnny used to uh, send tapes back and forth and, and talk, and I would wind up with these tapes of uh, Johnny and, and Bill talking. And that I was thought, like the early In the Shed episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were destined for this. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, it, uh, it just fascinated me to death to, to listen to those tapes. That was probably your old reel-to-reel -reel back then. Right? <laughs> no, it was cassette, believe really? it or not. Okay. Right. And uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of a lot of fun uh, doing those things. Well, the life of a musician is rarely easy. Tell us about the hard times and tell us about the salad days. <laughs> the hard times. Well, I was with a guy named Buddy Knox. I was a rhythm market, believe it or not. 
I don't know whether you've ever heard of Buddy Knox or not. It sounds familiar. All I want is a party doll to be with me when I'm feeling wild. Da -da 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 -da. To run her fingers through my hair. But anyway, it was a big hit. It was right under Elvis uh, in 1959. Okay. No yeah, it was right up, right up under him. I Early think, I think he was third, and we were fourth. Oh, really? Yeah, but the original group that he had uh, was a guy named Donnie Lanier, who was a guitar player. His uh, sister was an executive with Roulette Records. And uh, she got him on roulette, mm -hmm. of course. And uh, we traveled the the entire year of 1959. It was a, you know, it, it had its good points and it had its bad points, but most of them were very good. Uh, until one day, uh, money started running out. And he had married uh, by then, and his wife was traveling with us. And her family owned a chicken ranch down in, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of, of the town, but it was in Georgia. And anyway, so we wound up at the Atlanta Hotel in Georgia. And Buddy said, I'm going to check in here, and y'all can go down to the cafeteria and eat and whatever you need to do, you know, and I'll be back and pick you up, and we'll, you know, we'll take off on tour again. So, little by little, he didn't show back up. <laughs> <laughs> Wife didn't want him going back, or what was the deal? No, what happened was, he was very happy down there. It was actually Macon. Okay. In Macon. And we were up in Atlanta in this hotel, and they kept demanding money because we'd been there for like a week and we hadn't paid anything. <laughs> and evidently he hadn't either. Gotcha. And we were so broke we couldn't even afford cigarettes. We'd go look in the ashtrays and find the longest <laughs> cigarette that somebody stubbed out before they got on the elevator. And that's what we smoked. And that's true. There's a drummer here in town named Tom Prisk that was on the road with us uh, and uh, he, we just ate dinner with him just a few minutes ago. But uh, we were stranded and I wrote home for money and he wrote home for money and finally he got a check for like $1,500 and I think I got a check for $500. So that meant we had a little bit of money. And uh, so uh, we hung around that hotel and just did our thing for about a week and a half or two weeks. Were you playing there at the hotel? No. Just hanging no, out? No, just <laughs> watch, watching the secretaries come into those buildings down there. You know, <laughs> you know, just waiting to see all the secretaries come out. Yeah, it was it was quite a pull. Quite well, a, was a, what, what's some of the best times? <laughs> I'm sure you got many of them. Well, one of the uh, one of the best that stands out. And, yeah, you know. one of the best times I can think of is when uh, Johnny won the uh, uh, something for the arts. What is it? Oh, oh you like a, a medal? You mean? Well, no, it was it was an honorarium. Uh huh. And uh, they called him up and said, "Mr. Gamble, you have been nominated to uh, to." Uh, like a national be, endowment yeah, be, be initiated into this endowment for the arts. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she said, there's a matter of $10,000. And he said, well, can I pay it out? No. <laughs> Humble guy. He didn't know he was on the receiving end, obviously. That's good. But anyway, uh, she said, no, Mr. Gimbel said, uh, you're you're to receive $10,000. And he said, oh, in that case, can I bring my band with me? So we went up and spent uh, a week or a week and a half in D.C. Is that in right? D.C. Yeah. on uh, that gun. 
when you get my age, things don't come to you. <laughs> you don't have to be your age. <laughs> but anyway, we were we were there uh, for about a couple of weeks or a week and a half, and they took us over and, and uh, showed us a good time and, and over in in, uh, in Maryland, and then we went to the convention or the the presentation. Is that like? Where was that? That was in Washington D.C. What building? I mean, was it like a? Uh, well, we were we were actually in uh, the White House. Did Clinton for present, part of it? Present you? With, yeah, uh, yeah. In fact, Hillary came out and yeah. congratulated you. Yeah. Johnny and Johnny said, "Tell him I'll meet him over at McDonald's at about twelve o'clock." She <laughs> said, "Well, he'll be there." Ah, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Bill McDonald's. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, it was it was very exciting, and then we went to the presentation, and uh, so first time I had ever heard Johnny Gimble speechless, yeah. and he was actually almost speechless, and. Uh, tears rolling down his, his face and he said I just don't know how to thank you guys for this honor said it was uh, it, it's one of the greatest things that I've ever received in my life well he deserved it yeah he did he did and uh, so we we finished up there and then we partied for the rest of the week and and uh, well that's great what, what, yeah, what was this in like Mid nineties, yeah, been in nineties. Uh, yeah, I think it was in like ninety four, ninety four, ninety five, somewhere around in there. So, other, other than Johnny Gimble, who were some of the great uh, musicians that you played with over the years? Of course, of course, out. Willie Nelson. Yeah, yeah. The last time I saw Willie Nelson, he said, well, "How's things in Waco?" I said, "He's still there," and he said, "That's a shame." <laughs> Well, so much for getting Willie in this shit. <laughs> he just, he's not really, he's not really fond of Waco at all. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's not really fond yeah, of then Waco. I guess we'll have to go to Austin. We'll, we'll go wherever he is. We'll go wherever his bus is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he, he is a real nice guy. He's yeah, a very, I've very nice. Supposedly he's not doing too well right now. He probably got sick or yeah. something. Yeah. He had to cancel a bunch yeah, of dates. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I think he had, I think he had uh, some uh, pneumo. Th uh, pneumothorax. Oh, really? I think his lungs uh, yeah, well, we deflated on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully he gets better. Who else have you, uh, you know, strummed with or rubbed shoulders with that we might know of? Oh, Johnny Cash. Wow. Uh, in fact, we had to help carry him off the bandstand. Oh, really? Yeah. It was back Man. when Johnny was uh, consuming everything he could, I guess, huh? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, we were in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, we had to carry him off the bandstand. And that's when I was traveling with Buddy Knox oh, yeah. during that time, yeah. Wow. And that was 1959, yeah. so. Yeah, from and what I remember from Draw the Line, that's when he was pushing it. <laughs> yeah. We were also in the movie, Honeysuckle really? Rose. You were in that? Yeah. Really? Playing guitar. I have to go back and watch it. And Look for well, you'll again. see a, a, a much, much younger <laughs> well, The me. movie did come out in the 70s, so yeah. <laughs> much younger me. <laughs> Great. Yeah, uh, had Johnny Gimble, myself, he told uh, everybody uh, on the bandstand, Willie D, he said, my name now is Buck Bonham. Cool name. And uh, he said, don't anybody call me Willie. I'm Buck Bonham. If you speak to me at all, it's Buck Bonham. So, so he wanted to stay in character. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And so Bill Mounts is the guy I was trying okay. to think of. And uh, so we were going to get on the on the stand and uh, uh, play our our thing. And uh, Bill Mounts reached up and and uh, Willie grabbed him and. He said, hello, Bill, and Bill said, hello, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> so there went Bill Mounts' talking part in the movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
he, cutting he, room floor. He <laughs> did. Yeah, he didn't get another chance with that one. That's <laughs> oh, too bad. Well, uh, I think it's time to uh, play a little tune. Sure. All right. Okay, this is an old Merle Travis song. I think anybody that has ever played the fingerstyle guitar has played this tune. Uh, I learned it just kind of sitting and listening. But Merle moved here uh, when he was ill. And uh, he and his wife Dorothy, which is Hank Thompson's ex-wife, right. Uh, moved down here and I knew Dorothy very well because I knew Dorothy when Dorothy was with Hank back when I was about 12 or 13 years old <clears throat> and uh, so uh, he played this thing and I, I said oh that's the way that goes <laughs> cool. but he sat there in our uh, in our uh, school up on a stool and just played for about an hour, hour and a half, and did all of his smoke, 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 and detour, and all those tunes that he. Did he have his fancy guitar with his inlaid name on the he, neck? Uh, no, I don't think he, he did. I don't think him? he had that one with him. Then. Okay. Yeah. That's classic. But anyway, mm. this is one called. Uh, what is the name of that? Who cares? Go ahead. <laughs> all right, it's, it's named Who Cares. <laughs> saw you when uh, Tommy Emanuel played at the Bosque River stage for your MCC retirement. Right. How the heck did you guys at MCC get that guy to show up? <laughs> well, at that time, I don't think Tommy was as popular as he is now. Of course, I knew you about could, him back then, but I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm you like couldn't, car, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't get him now yeah. for $10,000. And I think... I'm not sure, but I think they paid him a thousand dollars. Good thing you retired when you did, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you'd have us play at your retirement party. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he came in to do that retirement party for me, and I thought to myself, that is the most uncanny guy I have ever seen in my life. I mean, all the things he could do with a guitar, it was just unbelievable. He was doing a lot of percussion that night, too. Yeah, oh yeah, he did percussion. See, he was a drummer before he was a guitar player. Yeah, his brother was a guitar player, and he was the drummer when they were in Australia. And uh, so, therefore, he knows all those percussion things. He, you know, eats them up. Was that the first time he was in White Guys? Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. But first then time. he came back, like, two well, more times. Yeah. Three more times, yeah. Came, yeah. 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 He liked Waco for some reason more than Willie. Well, actually, I think it was a it was a a connection with Dick and Johnny. Really? Yeah, that he liked mm -hmm. because I think every time we did this, Johnny Gimble uh, was on stage. Right. I believe that our band played before each one you did, of his. At that one. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, 
So, uh, of course, we opened for him. Right. Or no, just a minute. He opened for us. We came on last, and he stayed on and played along with us. Right, right, and, right. And uh, it was just fantastic. And then the next morning, we had a little session out at the school, and I, I went out, and we just played songs. He and I sat on the edge of the stage with our feet hanging off no and played songs. Yeah. Did you, was it like, do you know this song, let's play, do you know this song, you, did, did you already start playing? And just... Uh, just, yeah, usually he would start playing and I'd just join in. Yeah. Uh, our repertoires were uh, very close to the same. I mean, he knew most of the same songs that I knew. So, uh, he probably and knows he was a, written. You know? yeah, he was a big Bob Wills fan. I didn't really, I didn't realize that, but he was, he was a Bob Wills fan and he knew all the old Bob Wills tunes. So, that the, the Western Swing, one of the things I want to ask you about, and I, I don't want to get away from uh, Tommy or anything, but um, you know, that style of music, how do you, how do you describe what you play, what your style of music is? Is it jazz slash Western Swing, or you got like the the Django stuff going on, or, or is it just more Merle Travis and uh, Chet and those guys? For me personally, yeah. Me personally, I am. I don't want to call myself a jazz player because jazz players play different tunes than I do. Right. I, I've got a good friend, this uh, Chuck Jennings, that I was telling you about, and he plays the jazz tunes, but that's what he played in New York. But when you get down here, we take all the old uh, standard tunes and make jazz tunes out of them because we improvise right. over the changes. And uh, so... Uh, well, Johnny always, you know, I always kind of picked up some of that gypsy kind of Grappelli kind of stuff, it seemed like. Uh, he was not a fan of Grappelli's. Really? No. Uh, he... Uh, he was a fan of of uh, the old time fiddle players, and that's where his style came from. The old time fiddle players, the old house dances, and things like Got that. You. And he just branched off into this this uh, uh, improv improvisation thing, right? Uh, naturally, you know. He yeah, sit I guess a real list. trained ear probably yeah. can discern to someone like me. I mean, I'm. Not a fiddle aficionado, yeah. but you know, like Mark O'Connor and guys like that, mm -hmm. they're just virtuosos, they could play anything. Yeah, well, Johnny could too, but he just didn't want to. Gotcha. Now, he uh, he played what he wanted to play, and he says, I'm sorry, that's that's me, you know. I just play, I just play the tunes that I like, and, and uh, you know, I can play some of the other stuff, but I just don't want to, I don't like to. Well, you know, talking about MCC and Tommy being there and stuff, uh, how old were you on the faculty at MCC? When did you start and when, you know, talking 21 about... 21 years. Two. I started in 1982, and I think I retired in 05. Was that 20, 23 years, I guess? 23, 24 years, yeah. yeah. When did the music program start at MCC? Was it about that time, or was it way before that? I was the first one hired on the commercial music faculty. Okay. Dick Gimble and I were hired at the same time. And we went in and, and uh, kind of started organizing things because there were no textbooks. Right. You could get no textbooks. So we started writing one-page handouts and things like this. And uh, it finally grew into a, a viable thing. With the, uh, the second year, we added Rob Page, the saxophone player, which is a uh, fine, fine guy. He, in fact, he's still helping run the program out there. He's from still a, there? Yeah, from a, 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 a distance. Uh, as far as you know, were there many music schools or music programs in the United States at that time, or was, was MCC one of the... First ones. There were there were two. North Texas. North Texas didn't have a commercial music. Oh, program. didn't have commercial. No, nope, they did not have. They had jazz. Uh, out in West Texas, I'm trying to think of the name of the place, but they had a commercial music program out there. 
And that's kind of what we patterned ours after is, uh, uh, I'll think of it in a minute. So y'all can probably edit it back in <laughs> if you want to. So when you talk about commercial music program, exactly what is um, what, what exactly are you learning when you go to a commercial when you go to learn commercial music? You're what what is what does the commercial and commercial music mean exactly? Okay, commercial music, as we had it in our minds, meant that that is not classical uh, and not jazz. No, no, it was everything. Everything but classical. Everything but classical. Gotcha. Yeah, that was what we. Uh, that's what we. Uh, we kind of considered our program mm-hmm. that it wasn't classical. So we had uh, we had uh, a jazz thing going. We had a country thing going, which uh, Dick Gimble is still doing. We had a we had two guitar ensembles. We had. Uh, we had improv theory and all those types of things that go into training a person to be a musician in today's music scene. And yeah, that's what we a, were trying to do. Kind of a rock program too. Didn't yeah, it? we had a rock. We all big rock program. Yeah, yeah. John Coots finally took that rock program over yeah. Yeah, and did a John. great job with it. Yeah, you know, did you know John? We did him. Yeah, we, we interviewed him for our show before, yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, then, yeah. He's he's very he's a very good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a very good one. Well, you saw a lot of musicians go through the program. I know, I know Ruthie Foster, obviously, mm-hmm. went through that program. She's made quite of a name. Anybody else that uh, really impressed you? Or, you know, maybe you don't want to say anything out of <laughs> <laughs> But are you, are you still, like, uh, you follow music trends or anything now? Or are you just... You are where you are, and I don't need to hear anything else. Is there anything you <laughs> like out there these days? Uh, I haven't been out there since they had the, the recognition day for me. Right. Uh, the, I don't know whether y'all were, uh, attended that or not, but they had a... Uh, John Fox put together a, uh, a guitar ensemble of all of the guitar players that I had... No kid. ...kind of taught, yeah. And they had about an hour program. I heard about that. That was recently, right? Yeah, that was about a year ago. Okay, year and a half ago. Where where was where was this? It was where? in the small theater over in the uh, fine arts theater. Okay. It should it really should have been over in the other the big theater, but I think they had other things going on. They couldn't book it. And two, the small theater is so great sound for guitar ensemble. Yeah, I heard uh, Monty Montgomery in that. Yeah, sound, yeah. Sound great. Yeah. Anyway, so they uh, it it was overpacked. Uh, even the chairman of the department couldn't get in. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was uh, Evan Claris, and uh, I'll give you a list later. <laughs> Well, I'll scroll the list down the screen. There you go, and I'll say that one, that one, that one. <laughs> Are there any mu- uh, musicians or you know either you know that in today's world that you look at and can appreciate? Or I mean, what kind of music do you listen to now? I try to avoid all music. I hate music. <laughs> Except your own music. <laughs> I don't even like my own music. <laughs> Now, uh, I don't listen in the radio because if, I, if I'm if i driving and something comes on that takes my attention, I'll put all my attention on that. Ah, ADD, huh? Yep. Gotcha. Very, very much so. And uh, so it, it could influence my driving. Yeah. Well, you know. So you don't listen, to, you don't drive down the road to listen to music? Huh. Yeah. I listen to talk radio. There you go. Usually sports station. Yeah. Well, I personally will always appreciate talent and technique, regardless of style. Um, I hope you keep your fingers limber and continue to entertain. Are you gonna have any? You still gigging? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What do you play? Who do you play with? Well, I play with anybody who will call me up. Okay. And and ask Run me if I want to play. Kind of guy, huh? Yeah, I, I I am a freelance. We're looking person. for a house band for in the shed. I mean, you. you <laughs> well, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Well, you got to go to my house, and I'm, yeah. a, I'm probably three miles from here. So, you know. I've been working uh, with uh, Ann Harder. She's a, a girl that 
that uh, is a very good singer. She's anchor on yeah, yeah, we know anchor. Yeah. KXXV. And uh, I didn't know she was a singer. Oh, great singer. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, she and I have been working together for about four years, and she was singing this high opera opera voice thing, and we got her down in her chest voice, and we won't let her go into her head voice except very, very limited time. She's doing standards? She's doing all standards, yeah. Nice. Great, great. So you playing around with her, or are you yeah, uh, yeah. recording some music in the studio with her? We, I, we have done some stuff with her in the studio. Uh, I have uh, uh, done, uh, we actually, it, it comes down to a nonprofit organization. That's what it comes down to. Very seldom do we see any money. Well, that's good. Uh, pro bono stuff? Yeah, it's, it's mostly pro bono. Now, she is doing a dance job on Valentine's, uh, I mean, on April Fool's Day at uh, the Lion's Den. Uh-oh, that's my wife's birthday. Guess I got plans. <laughs> yeah, you got plans, babe. <laughs> you do. <laughs> and uh, she she's going to be over there, and we're going to do uh, the dance thing. My son plays bass. He's coming up from Houston. And uh, then we'll have Kenny Harris on piano. Do you know Kenny? I don't know. I don't know Ken I don't, Harris? I don't think oh, so. Oh, he's been around for years and years and years. He uh, He's written about, uh, I'd say, 200 different uh pieces for small uh, stage bands mm -hmm. and yeah. for uh, <clears throat> symphonic bands. Really? Most of them, uh, yeah, most of them marches and, uh, and things like that. And for stage band, of course, it's just, uh, he, he, he just does a tune and, and makes it up as he goes. Wow. And he's a fantastic arranger. I have to look for that guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. He's over here every Tuesday morning. And so is Ann. Right? At your little place here? Jan? Right. Right. We sit up in here and we have the dangest time you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> ah, to be retired. Have nothing better. <laughs> well, Ann doesn't have to go in until later, so yeah, that's yeah. why she's over here. Well, you're not, you're not fully retired. You're also doing, you're give, you give guitar, guitar lessons, mm -hmm. too. Yes. So yes. you, I know you give guitar lessons, but do you ever take lessons? Are you ever trying to expand your fingers, so to speak? Uh, you ever trying to learn some, anything new, or do you think you're? I have not. I have not done any. I have not taken any lessons. He doesn't need any lessons. Except, except, uh, I did do a little bit with uh, the guy from uh, North Texas. What's his name? Fred Hamilton. Okay. And he is a fantastic. In fact. Uh, this friend of mine, uh, Bob Lott, he was the uh, was the uh, editor of the uh, Waco Trib for many years. Okay, I got friends at the Trib. Yeah, and my wife was also there for twenty for almost thirty years. No kidding. Yep, yep. She was the uh, she was the uh, office manager for the newsroom. Well, we know a lot of people, I'm sure, mutual friends. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, anyway, uh, Bob Lott, uh, we all get over here and just jam and have more fun and, you know, almost like people. That's fun. That's what that's what it is. Y'all yeah. should come by some too. That's, some, that's what me and Dave do. We, uh, we, you know. Before, before, before we had the shed, really, this thing going, we would jam out the shed, you know, set up a couple of amps and guitars sure. and barbecue and play and drink beer. Yeah. yeah. Cool. The, the, the triumvirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beer, barbecue, and guitars. <laughs> <laughs> guitars, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of guitars, why don't you uh, take us out with another tune? Yeah. All right. Here's one of, here's one of my favorite standards. This is, a, this is an old standard. Uh, polka dots and moonbeams. Yeah.
other than being on our show, what would you say is your best musical memory? I would say that probably one of the best musical memories that I that I have was when we went to uh, what is it down close to San Antonio. Uh, the Alamo. No, 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 no. Been there. <laughs> Never played there. Uh, you Luke and, it? Luke and Bach. Oh, oh, yeah, Luke and Bach, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a memorial for Johnny Gimble. Oh, you played at the um, stage there in Luke and Bach? Yeah, yeah. It was... Uh, hopefully, hopefully it wasn't a hot day. It was. Very, very hot. They don't have AC in that place. No, no. But anyway, uh, we had... Uh, it was myself and uh, Ray Benson, no and of course Dick Gimble, and uh, had a bunch of people that came in just to just to do pay homage to. So they performed. Everybody performed. Yeah, everybody performed. We performed the last twenty minutes, and uh, had uh, George Strait's guitar player. Wow. Uh, Good friend of mine. I've known him all my life, and I couldn't think of his name now if I had to. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, he. Uh, uh, I've known him ever since uh, he was like 15 years old. In fact, every time I saw him, he'd say, "Show me a chord. Show me a chord." <laughs> you know a lot of chords. And he wound up. He wound up being one of the premier guitar players sure. in my mind. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, he is. In fact, he's come down. Uh, several times to jam with us over Bobby Lott's house. Bobby Lott has a jam session about once every three months. And we just kind of roll back the rug and take all the furniture out of the room and get, get, get down to some nasty chicken pickle. Get out, get out and get get something going. No, this is all old standards. This oh, is okay. not, this is this is the this is the, the, the mood music. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Like you just play? Yes. Oh, that and, and and some other stuff. I mean, we do we do a little bit of other stuff, but mostly it's just the uh, kind of the old standards and yeah. things like that. Well, sounds like you're still doing it and still having fun, and that's all that really matters. Well, I'm having I have fun playing, and I have fun jamming, but I don't have fun going to a job anymore. It just seems like it's just really, really hard for me to get up and get motivated. Now I'm looking forward to this thing that Anne's doing, right? Because I think I think it's going to be good because she picks great tunes and she sings well and she does all the 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 nice things. Yeah. But uh, uh, now, as far as just getting looking forward to getting out and going to a job, I look forward to the day I don't have to look. At going to a job yeah. in the morning. How yeah. about you, Troy? That would be nice. <laughs> I'm closer than you. Well, what do you two guys do? Well, I'm a creative director for a packaging company, and uh, Troy's a video mojo for, for the, city the Waco. Waco City Cable That's Channel. right. You told me that. Yeah. You so told I've, me that I've, you'd been down and, and filmed us. Down yeah, I shot of a couple of the Johnny Gimbel concerts down there, and I think three of the Tommy Emanuel concerts. Really? Yeah. We did one. He was at Waco Hall. Huh. Yeah, I was last that time he was there in, t- in town. And he did yeah. the first two at the River Stage, and the last one he did at yeah. the Waco Hall, which yeah. is a great room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any way I can get copies of that? Yeah, yeah. Just regular? Sure. DVD? DVD, yeah. 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 Love to have it. Yeah, okay. Let's close up the show. And let's, let's All right. Talk. Well, Kenny, it's nice having you on the show today. We Thanks for... In, you know, inviting us over here because it's the, the weather outside is really just horrible. Yes, <laughs> no, it's <not>. horrible. <laughs> it's, it's April February. outside. <laughs> it's April outside. <laughs> well, we usually do this in the shed, which is really outside. Oh, it's okay. a small shed about the size of that table. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, today well, you, you really get close then, yeah, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's the real deal. Yeah. So, uh, but it, yeah, Kenny, thanks a lot, man. This is great. Well, and, I was uh, just gonna say, I hope I haven't interjected too much negativism in this. Uh, saying that I don't enjoy music anymore. I enjoy good music. I right. enjoy just listen- not when you're tooling down the highway. That's right. I can't do it when I'm when I'm tooling down the highway. And but Bobby and I, uh, he'll send me something and say, "I want you to listen to this." 
And uh, so the music has to have your full attention. Oh yes. Yeah. That's why it drives me nuts. You see people walking around with the, the you know, the little ear earbuds walking. Around. Like you're not listening to that song. No. There's no way you're con- you're concentrating on what the music's doing because you're walking down the road, right. or you're reading a book, or you're trying to study with music, or you're texting. Yeah, that makes no sense. I mean, I, can't, I, I try to give my full attention to music as much. I can't as I even can listen to. to it on the treadmill. Yeah. yeah. I can't. I mean it. It just takes all the pleasure out of what, I and mean, it's just like putting two bad things together. <laughs> <laughs> Treadmill and bad music. I didn't get that. Picked it up with you laying down. <laughs> all right, well, Kenny, thanks for uh, being in the shed this evening, and we'll see everybody next time. Thanks, Dave, for being here, too. All right, thanks, Troy. In the shed. See you later. Bye.